guys, welcome to Cooking with Elena. I know it's been a while, haven't had a show in a while, so I wanted to um, show you guys how to make, um, I have three different things actually going on tonight, so uh, we'll get started right away. All right, the first thing that we are going to try, this is actually a brand new uh, recipe. I haven't uh, tried it before, I haven't tasted it, so hopefully it'll turn out well, So, but I'll, but I'll let you know. All right, so what we're going to make tonight is a mahi-mahi, which is a type of fish, a very, actually a very good tasting fish. And we're going to make mahi-mahi, and we're going to actually make put it over a mixed green salad. And actually, I've um, prepped that salad ahead of time, as you can see. Um, I've used uh, like mixed greens, mixed spring greens, and you can use whatever type of salad you want. Um, and then I sliced up some cucumbers and uh, put some grape tomatoes in and I actually put some blue cheese crumbles But you can use any kind of cheese you want if you want to use cheese at all. So I'm just gonna leave that on the side Okay, we'll get to that later All right, so here is our mahi mahi and it is we have about 12 ounces here and what we are going to do is we are going to um, put a very special coating on it and make sure if you are going to make this recipe make sure your oven is preheated to 400 degrees because the, we're going to oven bake our fish all right so what we're going to do is we have um, this bowl with one tablespoon of olive oil we also have um, this is approximately a half a cup of crushed pistachios. Okay, you can see that there. So we're just going to add that in here. Okay. There's a little bit stuck here, so make sure that all gets in there. Okay. And we have, in this bowl, we have a quarter cup of plain breadcrumbs. And in the breadcrumbs, I mixed about a quarter teaspoon of um, fresh ground pepper, too. And we're just going to add that in to the mix here. Okay, still have a little bit of pistachios like to get stuck at the side of the bowl. Okay, so we have our ingredients mixed with our, it's going to mix it with our oil. Mix, let's mix it up pretty well. This is going to be our coating. And for my salad dressing, I chose to make a, um, a homemade ranch dressing, and I added a little bit of spices to it. But you can use any kind of ranch dressing you want, or you can use any kind of dressing you'd like if you don't like ranch. I love ranch. I like it on everything. Okay, I think this is mixed up pretty well. Okay, see, mixed up pretty well. And um, this is our uh, dish we are going to use to bake the fish in, and I've already coated it very generously with cooking spray. So don't forget to do that. All right, so next thing we're going to do is get our fillets, dip it in our mixture, and we are going to generously coat the fish. And make sure it all gets on there. Okay. Yeah, don't be shy with it. Okay. How you doing there, Sean? I'm doing It's hot in this good. kitchen, isn't it? It is really hot. Man. <laughs> it's getting close to 400 degrees. Yeah, good thing we turned the furnace off, right? Right. That was a good idea. That's our second flip. We got one more to go. And if you don't want to put it on the salad, you can just eat it by itself. Pair it with like a vegetable like asparagus or broccoli. So have a potato with it. Okay. I think we got that pretty well covered. All right, just gonna wipe my hands off. Breading, and I think we're ready to go. All right, we're gonna put this in our oven for about 18 to 20 minutes, 400 degrees. So there it is. Okay. 
Alright, I'm going to set my timer. We'll do 20 minutes to start. Okay, there we go. Alright, I think we're ready to move on to our, uh, our next recipe. Alright guys, welcome back. Our Mahi Mahi fish has been in the oven for a couple minutes, so I figured this would be a good time to prepare our next recipe. And this is uh, a recipe I've made a number of times because I, I like it so much and so does Sean. And it's, it's a great recipe and you can eat it for lunch, you can eat it for dinner, or you can have it for breakfast. And this is the broccoli cheddar quiche. Um, if you don't like broccoli, you can also substitute spinach. That's not a problem. So I'll give you guys a rundown of uh, what, you, what kind of ingredients you need to make this dish. Okay, first we have um, broccoli. And this is uh, 10 ounces of broccoli. And you can find that in the frozen foods aisle at your grocery store. It comes in um, a little rectangular package. It's... Um, so if you use spinach, you, you, you would obviously buy the chopped spinach, or if you want broccoli, you would buy the chopped broccoli. So again, it's in a 10 ounce package in the frozen food aisle. And um, before you prep this recipe, of course, um, you'll either have to thaw it overnight or you can microwave it to thaw it. So it just takes a couple minutes and um, make sure um, after you thaw the broccoli or the spinach, whichever you use, make sure um, that, that you drain it properly that it's not watery or anything like that okay and this is our shell uh, I personally did not prepare the shell um, I already bought it um, prepared and that's the best way to go so much easier um, again in the frozen food section where the desserts are so you can find it on, it's like a pie shell okay all right next we have um, cheddar cheese and I happen to choose the sharp variety of cheddar cheese. And this is about a cup in here. Okay, so we've got the pie shell, we've got 10 ounces of broccoli, and we got about a cup of cheese. Okay, next we have um, part skim ricotta cheese. You don't have to use part skim. I use it because um, you know, it's, it's healthier. But um, you can use any kind of ricotta cheese you want. And this is um, one cup, one and a quarter cup of ricotta cheese. Okay, over here we have um, two egg whites and one large egg, and this is all blended together. So we've got that. All right, in this mixing bowl we have one teaspoon of oregano, one tea, um, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and um, I don't know if you can see this very well, but I had sautéed onions a little while ago and it's about a half cup of sauteed onions. And it's very easy, just chop your onion up, uh, throw it in a um, small frying pan, and saute it for about two to three minutes, or just until the onion gets soft. So I use a little bit of olive oil to saute the onions in. All right, so I think we got everything. All right, so what we need to do is just combine our ingredients. So yeah, we got our eggs. Okay, got our cheddar cheese. Gotta get our ricotta cheese out. Okay. And let's get our broccoli. Okay. Alright, we're gonna mix this all together. I'm sure you guys will really like it. It's really good. You like it, don't you, Sean? I love it. You like I've the... I've never seen it made, though. This is the first time I've seen it. Uh-oh. Like I'm usually not here when you're making it. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually making it behind the scenes, and you come home, and it's already done. Isn't that nice to come home to it is nice. a dinner? It, it is really nice. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, it's coming together nicely. Look at that. Yep, it's very easy, too. I bet you could do this if, on your own, Sean, but I don't think you'd want to. You like when I make things. I do. Okay. I prefer the grill. Yeah, sure, the grill man. One of these days, I will be filming you on the grill. I like to be outside, you know, if I'm cooking something like I like okay. the, you know, the wild animals are out there and things like that. All right. I think this is mixed up pretty well then. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So you just toss that in the little pie. I cup. do. 
I just toss it in the pie crust. Okay. Okay. And just spread it in there, try to evenly as you can. Okay. Okay. Oh, I forgot one thing. Hold on one second. All right. On top of our quiche, right before we put it in the oven, we can sprinkle some uh, Parmesan cheese. Gives it a nice touch. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to go. Now this cooks for longer than the fish, obviously. It cooks for about 35 to 40 minutes. Oh, our fish is doing good in there, it looks like. We're just going to... Put this right beside it, very carefully. Okay, all right, so we have about 10 minutes left on our fish. So we're gonna take a break, and then when we come back, our fish will be ready, and um, I'll prep the salads, and then I have to show you our final touch, our chocolate peanut butter fondue, so. See you guys in a bit. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, we have our um, quiche, our broccoli cheddar quiche, um, cooked in the oven. It's all done. We're just waiting for it to cool, and then we can um, cut it up. And we have our mahi-mahi fish salad. Um, I cut the fish, turned out very well. Just cut up the fish into strips, tossed it on a salad, and uh, tossed on some uh, spicy ranch dressing. So. Um, since all this is done, I can start showing you guys how to make my chocolate peanut butter fondue. So, let's just step on over here. Okay. All right, so we're at the stove now, as you can see. Um, I have combined a half cup of peanut butter. You can use creamy or crunchy. I like the crunchy. One cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips a half cup of milk, and a half cup of sugar. So that's all you need. And we are going to turn the stove on to low heat. Okay. There we go. Kind of like turn it to low heat. Just so everything melts. Spread everything around. Okay, in the meantime, um, I prepared a plate of strawberries, bananas, and Rice Krispie treats, and this is for our fondue. So we're just going to set this aside. This is our fondue pot. Just, I can turn up just a little bit. So I'll repeat those ingredients again. We can have one cup of semi sweet chocolate chips. Make sure you get the semi sweet and not the milk chocolate. A uh, half cup of peanut butter, smooth or crunchy, half cup of sugar, and half cup of milk. That's all you need. And then just melt this together. As you can see, it's melting pretty quickly. And so once this is all melted together, we're going to transfer that mixture to our fondue pot. Um, I don't know what kind of fondue pots um, you would have, but there's most of them I think are electric. I have an electric one. So once I get this all set up, um, I'll put it in there and then I'll I have an electrical outlet for it. And some people have fondue pots where you just have a burner underneath. So either one works fine. So oh, it's looking really good. And as far as things that you can use for the chocolate fondue, um, that's just what I like. I also like Oreo cookies, uh, marshmallows, and um, maybe if you make if you would have extra time, you can make fudge brownies. Those are really good dipped in chocolate fondue. Okay, almost done here. 
Yeah, you don't want the heat up too high because you don't want to burn it. You want it to be just the right consistency. your fondue pot up. Didn't take long at all. Very easy and it's a big hit at parties. Probably in future videos I'll do different chocolate type fondues and then maybe some cheese fondues. Those are always fun to make too. And also a hit. Okay. Just trying to get the last little bit out. chocolate fondue in the pot. All I need to do now is just uh, hook it up to some electricity and then we're good. Okay, put this on. So, all right. So if you don't have room for the quiche tonight, which I'm sure that you don't, um, I'm actually going to save it tomorrow for breakfast and maybe some for, for lunch tomorrow and for dinner. So, and we have, again, we have our mahi, mahi salad and our chocolate peanut butter fondue. So I had a great time. So I hope you guys had an enjoyable time watching and I hope you have time to try these out. So until next time, uh, have fun and I'll see you soon.